welcome back to another video. Today I am joined by my little puppy Cara who won't move and no matter where I sit. I've tried to film this video so many times and every time I move she sits right in the way. So we're just going to do it with her tonight too. Um, thank you so much for clicking on this video again and coming and watching them. We are really enjoying putting them together um, and we really hope that you are enjoying watching them even though BB looks really different to what it used to look like. Um, we are sticking through it and we really hope that we're going to be able to see you very very soon. Tonight Stephen is going to be doing our game and Robin is going to be doing our story. So enjoy the game uh, and get ready to go and then get ready to sit and listen to Robin's story. We will hope to see you very soon. Bye! Hello boys. Do you know what I love doing the most? I love going on holidays. And do you know every company you go to they have a symbol uh, what the company is famous for. So if we go and show me some symbols and you can sort of guess what it is. You know, if I show you this, it's a sandlock and it's a symbol of Ireland. I will show you some pictures now. I won't tell you what they are. I'll let me discuss it. And at the very end, we'll come back and tell you the answers. Now, let's get some answers. Now, this is Maple Leaf and it's Canada. This is Rose and it's England. This is Rooster and it's France. I'm sure everyone got this. It's a sailing war because it's a country. This is a bull and it's Spain. And this is a dragon and it's China. But Williams is famous for the dragon too. This is a bull eagle and it's America. Bye boys. I hope everyone's taken care of. Bye. Thanks for that Stephen. Hello boys. Hope you've had a good week. Uh, we're continuing on now tonight with our Jobs in the Bible series. So last time with Sarah we looked at the man who was a farmer and so would seed and we've looked at fishermen and, and things like that. And tonight we're going to look at someone who was a, a leader in the army. Okay, I don't know if you know anybody in the army, but um, obviously there's different ranks. And this man, he had, he was in the Roman army, and he had, he was a very important leader in the Roman army. And we're going to look at how Jesus met him, and touched his life. There was a Roman centurion who lived in the vicinity of Capernaum, and you can see there in the map, Capernaum's up. Uh, at the top there of the Sea of Galilee in Israel. Um, a Roman centurion was a very powerful person. He was in charge of 100 soldiers. Imagine if you were in charge of 100 people. How would you feel about that, huh? This centurion was respected and helped Jewish people. The Roman centurion's servant became very ill. The centurion tried to help the servant, but with no success. At the same time, Jesus was becoming well known for healing people. Even the Romans had heard of Jesus' power to heal. Remember at those times, the Romans were sort of, they had invaded Israel and they were in charge. But they wouldn't really have mixed that much. Normally the Jews and the Romans didn't like each other. Jesus was a Jew. So the Roman centurion asked some important Jews 
to go and ask Jesus to come and help his servant. This was probably quite awkward for these men. See, they may not have been followers of Jesus themselves. Many Jews marveled at the power of Jesus, but some Jewish leaders did not like him. The elders may have been reluctant to approach Jesus, but as the centurion was well respected, they did as he asked. When the Jewish elders came to Jesus, they begged him to go to the centurion. They told Jesus the centurion was worthy of Jesus' help because the centurion loved the Jewish people and had built their local synagogue, which is their local church. Jesus agreed to go out of his way to help the Gentile Roman centurion and his servant. The centurion lived away from the Jewish people on the outskirts of Capernaum, where there was a Roman garrison. Many Jews would never go into a Gentile's house. A Gentile was just someone who wasn't a Jew, so anybody else uh, was considered a Gentile, and uh, a lot of Jews wouldn't even sort of talk to them. But obviously Jesus wasn't like any other Jews. As Jesus approached to the home, the centurion sent friends saying to Jesus, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. For this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. Although the centurion was a very powerful man, he was also very humble. God likes humble people. The centurion believed that Jesus had the authority from God to heal people. The centurion told Jesus that he had the power to command his soldiers to go and complete any of his desires. And in the same way, Jesus had the power to simply command that his slave be healed. Jesus was amazed when he heard this. He turned to the crowd of people following him and said, Not even in Israel have I found such great faith. The centurion believed in Jesus and God's power. When the friends of the centurion returned to his house, there was great joy because his servant was completely healed. The Roman centurion was powerful, humble and most of all wise to have faith in Jesus. So boys, that man, even though he was in charge of a lot of people, he could have been thought of himself better than everybody else. But he realised that in comparison to Jesus, he was nothing because Jesus was God's son and in control of everything. So um, it's a good lesson for us to learn because we sometimes think that we're maybe better than other people. But in the eyes of God, we're all the same because we all there's not one of us haven't has hasn't sinned hasn't done bad things but the great news is that even though that's happened we can ask jesus to forgive us for our sins and ask him to help us and guide us in our lives uh, to live for him so uh, thanks for listening boys we're just going to have a wee prayer now heavenly father we thank you for this story uh, of the centurion lord we thank you for the faith that he had and we thank you that he humbled himself before you. We thank you that he realised that you were in control of all things and that all he had to do was believe in you and that you would help him and guide him. And Jesus, we know today that you're in control of all things as well. So we just would ask you to help us in all that we do, Lord, and our friends and our family as well. And we're sorry, Lord, for the times when we do wrong things and we pray that you would forgive us uh, our sins when we do these things or think or say these things. We just pray you continue with us now and bring us back again in a couple of weeks. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching again, boys. Um, We've got a couple more of these uh, to do to take us right up to Easter. Um, so the next one obviously will be out again in a couple of weeks, which I think is the 19th of March. 
Um, so until then, we hope that you're doing well. We hope that you take care of yourself. And um, we'll chat to you again soon in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.